Hello again. My name is Fred Klink, and I'm going to be talking about the method development process for LCMS. Earlier in this conference, I discussed Electrospray, and with this talk, I'm going to bring in the other two uh, interfaces that we use for LCMS, that is APCI and APPI, and we'll discuss how those fit into an overall scheme for developing a successful LCMS method. And so in uh, keeping with the earlier talk that I gave on Electrospray, I think the subtitle to this talk could be that there is more to LCMS than just Electrospray. Electrospray is the most widely used type of interface, and the reasons for that are, are variable, but a lot of it is fashion. And as scientists, we tend to think of ourselves as not being particularly subject to the whims of fashion, but in fact, I think we are. We go to conferences and we see some very glamorous applications in biological macromolecules being run with electrospray, and we say, that's for me. I've got to run electrospray when I get home. Well, in fact, one of the important messages that I have in this talk is that for small molecule analysis, electrospray may not be, in fact, often is not the best choice. And so let's talk about what our other options might be. We have three uh, interfaces available in modern LCMS, that is electrospray, atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, and atmospheric pressure photo ionization. Our colleagues at Agilent Technologies came up with this chart a few years ago, and I think it's an excellent chart to begin the discussion of, uh, of methods development and how we choose between these three uh, types of interfaces. The first thing we'll notice is that there is a low mass cutoff, the vertical axis in this case being the molecular weight, the horizontal axis representing uh, the polarity of the analyte molecule. And we'll notice that there is a low mass cutoff below which none of these interfaces is applicable. And that, of course, is the limitation of HPLC. HPLC cannot be used to run gas phase analyses. So we're talking about those molecules which are applicable to various types of HPLC. Let's look first at atmospheric pressure chemical ionization. And one of the first things that we'll notice about atmospheric pressure chemical ionization is that it's a small molecule technique. We need to keep the molecular weight of the analyte somewhere below 1,000 Daltons. We'll also notice that while it has a good range of polarity from quite polar uh, organic molecules down to uh, somewhat polar organic molecules, we do have a cutoff on the polarity range as well, and we can't go to very, very low polarity or nonpolar materials with atmospheric pressure chemical ionization. That is actually the province of atmospheric pressure photoionization. Nearly complete overlap between APPI and APCI, the only really significant difference being that APPI can be used for very nonpolar, that is uh, hydrocarbon type or polynuclear aromatic types of analytes using normal phase chromatography. Atmospheric pressure chemical ionization uses reversed phase chromatography. And finally, looking at our third uh, type of interface, that is the electrospray interface, we see that there are two significant differences between the APPI, APCI region and the electrospray region. The first one, of course, is the molecular mass. Uh, this is by no means meant to say that 100,000 is the maximum. We routinely see 150,000 Dalton and larger proteins being run by electrospray ionization. Uh, through the ion evaporation process that I described in my previous talk. But the other significant difference is the, on the polarity scale. And as discussed in that previous talk, electrospray requires that the analyte be able to dissociate in an aqueous solution to form an ion in that solution. And so again, electrospray is going to be limited to reversed phase chromatography as is APCI. 